Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and by popular demand, I'm going to present this two-part video on case hardening, also called surface hardening or carburizing, and there's just an awful lot of related information, and that's why the video is going to be so long. Now, I do have the furnace preheating here. It's been on for about 90 minutes already, and it just takes about two hours to get up to 1650 or 1700 degrees, which reminds me that 50 years ago I'd have to get to the high school at 6 in the morning in order to turn the furnace on and get it heated up by first period if we were going to do heat treating that day. And you know, I wasn't the only one that had to get there early. I noticed that there were teachers up on the third floor, English teachers, that already were cramming for the day, uh, boning up on Emily Dickinson and T.S. Eliot and Walt Whitman and so on. And some of the math room teachers were there too, boning up on Euclidean geometry. Not. The furnace is warming up. It's about 1400 or 1450. Still has a little ways to go. And boy, that heat feels good on a cold morning like today. So what equipment do you need for case hardening? Well, you need a heat treating furnace or an oxyacetylene torch. And you can do small parts just hanging from a wire without the use of a furnace. But for larger pieces, this really is your best bet, but not everybody is going to have that, I know that. This came from a dentist's office. I've had this for about five years. This would be a rather expensive furnace. It is 15 amps, so it will plug in at 110. And it can be preset, which I already have, for 1650. Now I'm getting ahead of myself here. You'll also need uh, your various safety items, glasses, shields, gloves, and so on, and a bucket of clean water. That's a galvanized bucket. Don't use plastic, and you notice that it leaks. I have a fire brick here. This is what we're going to do, of course, uh, these little swivel jaws, which there's a five-part video on that. It might help to have a little baker's pan like this to put some of the carburizing material in. And then most important, you will need some surface hardening compound. Now I am sorry to tell you that this case night is no longer available. I've had this for several years already, but it's probably a 50-year-old container that came from Maxwell Street in Chicago. And I bought this from my friends in uh, a little town. And there was a video on that. I'll put it on the screen now. That was uh, all about getting rid of... Uh, oh, I forgot the name of the title. Here's the title. Watch this video. A lot of people have. Watch this two-part video of mine, sometimes called The Disassembling of American Industry. It's a two-parter from May. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Now I'm going to put pictures of these definitions of case hardening at the end of the video so you can read them and study them. But this information is available in virtually every metalworking book. But case hardening, and this is from the text by Fire, John L. Case hardening is a process of hardening the outer surface or case of ferrous metals by adding a small amount of carbon to the case of the low carbon steels. It can be heat treated to make the case hard. At the same time, the center or the core remains soft and ductile and read through the rest of it. Very interesting. Okay, this definition is from the Henry Ford Shop Theory book of which they printed 10 million copies. Perhaps you have one, but in here they even suggest that you make your own carburizing compound out of charcoal and all of these references refer to about 1650 or 1700 degrees, which is very, very hot cherry red. I took the liberty of uh, putting on paper the description and directions here on the back of the caseonite can. It's a little hard to read here. Now, I've been told that caseonite is a coke type of carbon product. 
So here are the directions off of the caseonite can. This was a widely used product in almost all school metal shops. No longer available, as I said. And we are always uh, case hardening mild steel. That's what it's all about, not tool steel. Although, although it does talk about using it on tool steel on the directions, but I didn't print those out. But for mild steel, heat the part uniformly to a bright red temperature of about 1650. Then dip or roll in a compound to form a fused shell around the area to be hardened. Reheat to a bright red. Quench immediately in clean cold water using a scrubbing action to ensure maximum cooling rate. That means a figure eight. And then to increase the depth, repeat the operation. Notice the warning on the can says caseonite compounds are highly refined, non-poisonous, non-flammable, and non-explosive. So they were safe to use in schools. This is a five pound can of caseonite. It was almost full. It was so rusty on the top I had a heck of a time opening it because it had never been opened. So, uh, and this is the number one. I don't know if there was a number two or a number three. I, I never heard of them, but this is what I'm going to be using. But since this is not available anymore, let me show you two or three other sources of a similar compound. This seems to be the most popular surface hardening compound now. It's called Cherry Red. Here it is. And these are terrible pictures taken off the screen. This is from Travers. And it's $30 for one pound. And then you add the shipping there, you got almost $40 for one pound, which isn't very much. And here is a description of that product. Still pictures available at the end of this video. McMaster Car has their own brand available in various sizes. One pound is 25, over $25, but you can buy a five gallon pail of it if you have a notion. Gunsmiths do a lot of case hardening on small parts. Here it is in the Brownells catalog. Also, what, $27 for a one pound container? So check that out. Probably all of the gunsmithing catalogs offer this product. Do not confuse what I am doing with the beautiful color case hardening that they did many years ago. And you can still see it on antique firearms and tools. I was looking around here and the only tools I have that were uh, color case hardened, uh, it has worn off. So I don't have a good example to show you. But that was done by a cyanide process that was incredibly dangerous and toxic. It is no longer done anymore. You know, cyanide was a good, uh, and arsenic were good uh, rat killers. And it killed humans too. And I think caused <clears throat> all kinds of uh, physical problems. So don't mess around with arsenic, but uh, I should say uh, cyanide. But you're not going to find it anyway. It isn't available, I don't think, any place. So anyway, this is not color case hardening. I know I'm jabbering a lot, but there's just a terribly large body here of information that I wanted to cover. If you're a metal worker, you are familiar with this color chart, and this was put out by Temple many years ago. It was printed in virtually every textbook. Also, I had better copies on the wall at school, so often you'll see this picture around a heat treating area in a factory. See, this was just torn out of one of the textbooks that I have. Let's talk about it. Now, the dark part here is the steel at a lower temperature where it's just a natural color. But as you start getting here, and these are the temperatures on the far left, all in Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit sorry for you guys in Europe, but at about a thousand degrees, that's where the very dull red starts appearing. And then it becomes brighter and brighter until it gets to be cherry red. By the way, all of this information is in metallurgy textbooks, but you do not want to read those because they turn into a chemistry class and it's impossible to understand unless you are really well adversed 
in math and science and all that. But all right, here's a thousand degrees, and we get hotter and hotter. Then we get into the carburizing range, and you can see that's between 1700 and 1800, and that's the temperature we want. Now you're not going to have a thermometer on your furnace probably so you can go by color it's quite accurate cherry red and the critical temperature I believe here at 1400 degrees is what we call the magnetic point and if you check a piece of red hot steel at that temperature or above you will find and touch it with your magnet you will find that the magnetism uh, there is no attraction at that point, very unique, I think. I like to show that to the kids at school. But of course, as it cools, that magnetism reappears. That's all I'm going to say about this chart. It's very, very interesting. So, oh, one more thing. One more thing. Now, I just showed you the carburizing area. So, number 11, and it was numbered 11, and then you can read it there that Carburizing consists of dissolving carbon into surface of steel by heating to above the transformation stage in presence of carburizing compounds. How about that? Okay, I wanted to show you a few things out of the old Ryerson stock list. And this is a 50-year-old book, but it doesn't matter. None of this has changed. But the steel that we're going to case harden is low carbon, that is 1018 steel, and notice that here in the index they even call the rounds here low carbon case hardening type of steel. Medium carbon is called direct hardening. And this page shows the chemical composition of steels, and the ruler here is right on 1018, and the carbon content is from 0.15 to 0.20 so 0.18 is probably about average and that's where they get I believe the number 1018 steel. Here's a sample piece that I carburized yesterday notice that it changes the color but it isn't objectionable at all and can you tell by the sound I'm not sure if that picks up or not that it is hard. Now how deep is the case hardening on this piece? I don't know. There's no way of me, in uh, I have no laboratory, of checking that. But it's probably only one, two, three, four thousandths. And the longer you soak it in the carburizing compound, the deeper the case will be. Now I did this actually by two methods yesterday two different samples. The first one I put in the furnace and brought it up to 1650, took it out glowing red hot and put it in this little pan of caseinite. I rolled it around, let it in there a few minutes, and I really thought that it would get a thicker crusty layer stuck to it. It did not. It was rather scant. Then I put it back in the furnace and let it in there all half hour, I think it was, and took it out and quenched it. Remember, there's two different things here. One is you're carburizing it, that is you're adding the carbon, and then once the carbon has been added, you have to go back and heat treat it, that is harden it. But you will not have to temper it as we do with tool steel. Now here's the second method that I tried. I made this little tray this morning out of 20 gauge steel. It was painted, so I, I had to burn the paint off. I went outside to do that so that my long-suffering wife didn't have to smell that throughout the house. And even what I'm doing here will smell a little bit. But I'm going to do it by two methods again. And in this tray, I will put some of the compound and then when it's red hot, I'll place that on the compound and sprinkle more on the top and then put the little tray into the furnace. I think I'm going to go for a whole hour on that. Then take it out and quench it and it will be hardened. This is the tray that I used yesterday. And whatever was left in there is not reusable as you can see. Some of it did stick to the part and it came off of course when I quenched it. 
and of course the sheet metal is more or less consumable. The temperature is now 1600 degrees so it won't be too long before we get to hardening here. I took a fire brick which I bought at Tractor Supply and cut it in half which was no easy job I had to drill holes but why am I telling you that well I, I the other half is in the furnace and that is my hearth so to speak because this does contaminate my furnace and uh, I do value this furnace and it would be very very expensive to buy one the one I had at the high school was really quite a bit smaller and you had to guess at the temperature and yes, of course these jaws would be far better if they were made of tool steel and could be hardened throughout. Probably all vice jaws on bench vices, or quality vices, are hardened by that means with tool steel. You know, tool steel is pretty expensive considering you'd have to buy a bar of it. So you, you, know, you might have 40 or $50 in tool steel alone. And most of you do not have the budget for that as I do not myself. Now, if enough people watch this video, if there's enough interest in heat treating, and again, I'm not a metallurgist, but I think I would go ahead and make more videos, one on hardening and tempering of tool steel, and one on annealing, although you've seen me anneal, and I don't mean kneeling, I said anneal, also an interesting process. Then there's normalizing. You know, there's all kinds of different processes. This is fascinating work if you're a metal worker, a machinist. So the furnace is just about there. And again, what I'm going to do now, and I have a piece in there now, soaking. Now, soaking means you leave it in there long enough so it is the same temperature throughout, no matter how thick it is. Even if you were in the center of this piece, it would be 1700 degrees in the center the same as it is on the outside. Now that takes a while to, to, to get to that degree of hotness, heat, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that's why we call it soaking. It takes a while. But the first, I already have a, one of these samples in the furnace, as I said. I'm going to bring it out here in the next scene, which might be a half hour from now, but it'll be instant for you. And I'm going to Put it in the pan of caissonite and cover it, let it sit in there for a few minutes and then put it back into the furnace. Are you ready for that finally? About time you're thinking. The temperature is 1650 so let's take a look. Holy mackerel is that hot. So I dropped it in the pan. And I want to cover it now. Can you see that? Now I'm going to leave it in there for just a couple minutes. You can see it smokes a little bit, but not too bad. Then I'm going to shake it off. We'll see how much the shell builds up, but I do not expect it to be a lot. Now remember, I'm still doing uh, a sample rather than the jaws themselves and there's a slight ammonia smell to this some furnaces have a little peep hole in them so you can see uh, what the temperature looks like as far as the color but I guess because of the fact that we got the thermometer on here they they passed on that but when you open this to take your work in or put it in or take it out make it fast you do not want to lose any of that heat because it's going to take five or ten minutes to make that up even if you got it open almost momentarily okay it's been five or ten minutes i'm going to take it out put it into the furnace you see most of it falls off That might have been a little bit too much of a crust, I don't know. Remember, I'm experimenting too, and in 30 minutes I'll open it up, but boy, this is smoking like crazy. All right, it's been exactly a half hour since I put this in the furnace. Put your glasses on, figure eight.
Now there's a bit of a scale on it, so let me clean that up with a wire brush. But I think it's a good one. There it is. It looks pretty nice. I kind of like the mottled color. Now some people pack it and uh, make it uh, airtight and so on and, and do this for a whole day. But using a file, my only way of checking it, it does feel quite hard. How deep the case is, again, I will never know. Okay, that concludes part one of this very long video and I've just done the samples of the vice jaws. In the next part, part two, I will do the actual swivel jaws themselves and I hope you join me for that. Thanks for watching.